Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is how to calculate a predicted post-operative FEV1. So predicted post-op FEV1 or PPOFEV1. So there are really two major ways to do this. The first way is to use a, a segment approach. So what you're going to do is you're going to count up the segments and you're going to subtract the segments that are being removed and then whatever you're left with will be the percentage of the FEV1 that will remain. So as we know we have a lung here and we have the lower lobe here uh, or the left lung here and when we look at it, we usually have about three segments classically in the upper lobe, two segments in the lower in the middle lobe, and five segments here. Whereas on the uh, left side, we classically have four and four. Sometimes people will alternatively say there's five here and five here, and you can use both of these methods to calculate. But for our purposes, we'll say there's 18. So let's imagine we're doing a right upper lobectomy. Well, if we're going to do a right upper lobectomy, then the right upper lobe goes away. And what we're left with is a total of 15 segments. So if the patient's preoperative FEV1, preop, was about 72, let's say, percent, then we can easily calculate his post or his predicted post operative FEV1 would be 15 eighteenths of 72% because that's what's left. Well, if we quickly get a calculator, I can pull that up right here. 15 divided by 18 equals about 83%, and that multiplied by 72% will give you 60. So this post-operative FEV1 predicted is going to be this, which we just decided is 60%. It's really easy to do, and in fact, you can do it even if a patient has had a previous lobectomy. So let's look at that scenario. Let's say the patient had had a previous right upper lobectomy. So he's left with two segments in his middle lobe, five segments in his lower lobe. On the left side, we have a complete lung with four segments up here and four segments down here. Now let's say that instead of a... Uh, he's going to have a left lower lobectomy. All right, and that one's going to go away. And so and we're going to miss this piece is going to be removed. And those four segments are removed. So his post-operative or predicted post-operative FEV1 will be a total of 15 segments to start. And we just removed four, so he'll be down to 11 segments left. Five, six, seven, plus the four is 11. So 11 segments of 72%. And again, if we bring up our calculator, we say 11 divided by 15 equals, oops, 11 divided by 15 equals 73%. And 73% of 72 is going to equal 52.8%. So again, this would equal 52.8%. So what if the patient has an obstructive lesion? Because the segmental assessment assumes that all of the segments are working normally. And that's great if a patient has a small peripheral tumor, say sitting up here, 
in the middle of his right upper lobe with very little segmental loss or post-atelectasis or obstruction. But what if instead of a tumor like this, you're dealing with a very central tumor that's obstructing the airway or a carcinoid? And in that situation, each segment is not functioning at a normal level. For this one, we use a perfusion calculation to figure out. And that's in a patient who has, say, a collapsed upper lobe with what appears to be a normal middle lobe. So this is two segments for sure. This is five segments, but this one is a big question mark. We don't know. Is it is it acting like three segments or two segments or one segments? It's all a big question mark. All right. Perfusion system will let us do that. Now it works best for pneumonectomies, but when you get a lung perfusion study, what you're going to see is you're going to see each of the lungs, and they're going to get a value. So there'll be a total of, say, normally those about 55% of the perfusion goes to the right lung, and about 45% of the perfusion goes to the left lung. But in a patient with a, let's say, a central obstructing tumor with collapse, this one was normal, but in a patient with a central obstructing tumor and collapse, we may expect to see something a little bit different, like say... Twenty-five percent here and seventy-five percent here. This twenty-five percent is the side that's getting removed. So to calculate the predicted postoperative FEV1, we would take seventy-five percent of their FEV1 because that's what's going to be left after a left pneumonectomy. After a left pneumonectomy, the predicted postoperative FEV1 would be 75% of their existing FEV1. As you can see how that would be quite different than what we would get if we use the segment method. So in this same situation, if we use the segment method, we would normally assume that he had lost eight segments here, and he has a remaining 10 segments over here. So if his pre-op FEV1 was, say, 80% using the segment method, we would take 10 eighteenths of 80%, and again, using our calculator, 10 divided by 18 equals 55%. Multiply that by 80, and we're left with a 44% FEV1. But if we use the perfusion method, you'll notice that we actually take 0 0.75 times 80, which is going to equal no, we don't need the calculator, do we? 0 0.75 of 80 is going to be 60%. You can see the big difference here, calculating with segmental versus perfusion. So in patients who have a centrally obstructing tumor or even any obstructing tumor, you're going to want to choose the perfusion method over the segment method so you can get a much more accurate assessment of what's going to be left. You can even use the perfusion method, depending on how that perfusion study is performed at your institution, to calculate the predicted postoperative FEV1 after, say, a lobectomy. Because in some institutions, we'll provide the data for the regions of the lung. So you'll get, say, on a normal one, 55% here and 45% here, but they'll also report 
an alternative number, which is, say, 20% from the upper half and 25% from the lower half. And on the right side, maybe it'll be 15%, uh, let's say, 25% here and 30% down here. All right. You can use this to make an estimate as well. Because let's say you had a patient with a right upper low central carcinoid with right upper lobe collapse. All right, in this situation, you could get your perfusion study, and let's say your perfusion study came back like this with. 45% here on the right. Ah, sorry about that. Let's just erase that real quick. And 55% over here. But on the split, they tell you that there's only 10% or 5% up here, and there's 40% down here. Well, then this is what's going to go away when you remove the right upper lobe. So to calculate your predicted post-operative FEV1, you would take 55 plus 40, or 95%, multiply that by their FEV1 to get their predicted value, predicted post-op FEV1. And that, again, would be better than using a segmental approach because with a segment approach, removing the three segments from the right upper lobe, so this is a perfusion, and with a segment, it would have been 15 eighteenths times their FEV1, which, using our calculator, is 83% or 0 0.83 multiplied by their FEV1. Clearly this is going to underestimate how much FEV1 would be left, whereas this will give you a much more accurate one. I hope that helped. Thanks very much.